the protagonists of the plays Dr. Faustus and Prince Hamlet stand for distinct periods of the authors, Marlowe alias Shakespeare's life. Autobiographically, Faustus is Marlowe in his early period, that is in his first life. His despair is the tragedy of man, who failed, who asserts his freedom of will, sets out early to have his own way, distrusts God, concludes a pact with the devil and in his pride denies God's help and fails ever to change his willful ways. Autobiographically, Hamlet is Marlowe in a later period, that is in his second life, after his fatal loss of identity and name. Hamlet's mood of despair represents thus a complementary position or a different approach compared to Faustus. Hamlet's play, Q1 and 2 to 1604, reflects the tragic development of a poet genius, who has an obligation placed upon him, an oath not to reveal his secret personal situation, a mission to perform, which is not his own making and who suffers from his identity loss and namelessness. Autobiographically Faustus once more is Marlowe in his late period of serenity, B text 1616, in the year, when his frontman Shakespeare from Stratford died. Regard some arguments why Marlowe in 1604 speaks for himself in the person of Hamlet. At first consider, that in an early play, Love's Labour's Lost, Shakespeare had revealed his often used dramatic dialogue technique when stating. Put thyself in the trick of singularity, she thus advises you that sighs for thee, Malvolio. Which means, that the author as Hamlet, presents his own thoughts and ideas, by dividing his person between his outer voice, and instances of his inner voice, that is his second self, or superego, most often acted by female virtues or muses, by relatives or friends, in Hamlet, by his father's ghost. Marlowe's life disaster was his forced change of identity and name by means of a feigned death with the support of the crown. This is obviously depicted in Hamlet's ghost scene, in which Hamlet's ghost, his perished first life, his first and lost identity, speaks to him and to us, as the author Marlowe, in his current role of his second life. Listen to a few sentences of the ghost's monologue, Hamlet's inner speech or thoughts. Pity me not but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. I am thy spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fires, until the foul crimes, done in the days of nature are burnt and purged away, but I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house. I could a tale unfold, whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood, revenge my foul and most unnatural murther. Murther most foul, as in the best it is, but it is most foul, strange, and unnatural. It is given out, so the whole ear of Denmark, that is England, is by a forged process of my death rankly abused, but no, you noble youth. Thus was I sleeping. Of life of queen, at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, no reckoning made, but sent to my account, with all my imperfections on my head. O oh, most horrible, if you ask nature in thee, bear it not.
In the player's speech Hamlet recalls a speech, he remembers from a previous performance. Quote. One speech in it, I chiefly loved, it was a near stale to Dido, and thereabout of it especially, when he speaks of Priam's slaughter. Hamlet recites some thirteen lines, before inviting a player to complete the lengthy speech. This scene can be regarded as the covert attempt by Marlowe, to convey to the audience the connection between the author of Hamlet and the author of Dido. The passage only gets its meaning when Marlowe wanted to express, he, who at the beginning of his career wrote the very good but unsuccessful, play Dido also wrote, Hamlet. Otherwise the motives can hardly be explained, why in Shakespeare's Hamlet the details of the performance and the lack of success of Marlowe's early play Dido, are spread out. It is of some significance and by no means purely coincidental, that many complementary parallels between Faustus and Hamlet can be noted. For example the careers of Hamlet and Faustus, both derive from intellectual Wittenberg, a German university town, repeatedly mentioned in similar contexts in both plays. This is an indication, that both plays resulted from the same author. In Shakespeare's day, Travel by water was the fastest and easiest form of travel, so no doubt Hamlet and his friend Horatio could have travelled by ship, from Elsnor, Helsinger, around the coast to Hamburg, then upstream the river Elbe to Wittenberg. If they rode, they would follow the river valley, as the most convenient route. Differences between the quarter one and quarter two versions are of importance in the readings of the play, quarter two is a revised version, in 1604, years after the staged Q1 version. Comparing textual differences between the soliloquy passage, to be or not to be, in quarter one and quarter two, you notice in quarter one a threefold, varied statement, rather than a single question. 1. To be or not to be, I, there's the point. 2. To die, to sleep, is that all? I, all. 3. To sleep, to dream, I, Mary, that is combine them, there it goes. Thus, the existential problem, is it better to be alive than dead, is answered in quarter one authentically and biographically, compared to a complementary, more artistic answer, in quarter two. Perhaps it is best suited for the desire of the poet genius for an enhanced obfuscation of his identifiability. The significance, that Hamlet or the author lives in a third state, between dead and alive, in a state of sleep or dream, is growing in Q2, and heavily reminding of the two prologues in the two versions of A Taming of, A Shrew, 1594, or The Taming of, The Shrew. 1623. Three months after Marlowe's supposed death, in September 1593, Gabriel Harvey, at that time believing in Marlowe's death because of the plague, in his essay A New Letter of Notable Contents, elucidated Marlowe's genius, the highest mind that ever haunted Paul's, but also some negative details about the exaggerations of his character and his a-religiosity. Harvey regarded Marlowe as the author of Hamlet, whom he equated with Machiavelli, when he wrote,
What say you to a spring of rankest villainy in February, and a harvest of ripest divinity in May? May they not so cease to wonder, that wonder how Machiavel, Marlowe, can teach a prince, to be, or not to be. Religious it is of great significance that the 1604 version of Dr. Faustus, a text, was followed much later by a longer version of Dr. Faustus, so called B text, in the year of Shakespeare's death in Stratford, 1616. In the markedly expanded and altered B text, 36 lines of the A text have been deleted and 676 lines have been newly added, as the middle part so that the B text is one third longer than the A text. Faustus in the B text, entering with a false head, exclaims, being asked, to get his head back, nay keep it. Faustus will have heads and hands. I call your hearts to recompense this deed. Knew you not traitors, I was limited for twenty-four years to breathe on earth? And had you cut my body with your swords or hewed this flesh and bones as small as sand, yet in a minute, had my spirit returned, and I had breathed a man, made free from harm. But wherefore do I dally my revenge? How could it happen that the popular play Dr. Faustus, staged in 1592, prior to Marlowe's alleged death in 1593, was printed again, highly modified, in 1616. B text. Who may have made such significant late additions, at the end of Shakespeare's life? The single, most plausible answer is, that Marlowe's Faustus, in view of Shakespeare's death 1616, felt the need to reveal his biographical secret in a roundabout way. The stage instructions, Faustus enters the stage with his false head, clearly points to his feigned identity, and when complaining, that he himself was limited for 24 years, 1592 to 1616, to breathe on earth and that they divided him, had cut his body with their swords, or hewed this flesh and bones as small as sand, yet rapidly, in a minute had his spirit returned, under pen names such as Shakespeare. He is finally coming out.